Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I too join the Prime Minister in commemorating the attacks that took place on, in Westminster a year ago, and I too will be at some of the events tomorrow. We should all remember this as an attack on democracy within our society. I also join the Prime Minister in sending condolences to the friends and family of the Red Arrows engineer who sadly died yesterday, and we wish the pilot well in his recovery. Um, Mr Speaker, I had the pleasure of meeting Andrea Zafariku, who has won this Global Teachers Award just before she went off to receive it, and I think we should all congratulate her and Alperton School in Brent for the great work that she does there. And Mr Speaker, today is the Kurdish New Year, Navroz. Can we wish all Kurdish people all around the world a happy, and particularly for those who are suffering so much in the conflict in Syria, a hope of peace in the year to come? Mr Speaker, does the Prime Minister believe the collapse of Northamptonshire Council is the result of Conservative incompetence at a local level, or is it Conservative incompetence at a national level? Answer. Can, I, uh, can, I first, can I first join the Right Honourable Gentleman in, uh, in wishing all those who are celebrating No Ruse a very happy No Ruse. Uh, and uh, if, we are looking at, if we are looking at what is happening uh, in relation to local councils, uh, obviously there has been the report into uh, Northamptonshire County Council, but let's just look at what we see across the board in councils. <laughs> If you, if you look at what is happening in councils up and down this country, there is one message for everybody, and that is that Conservative councils cost you less. Jeremy Corbyn! Mr Speaker, my question was actually quite specific yeah. to Northamptonshire. Yeah. And, uh, the Tory leader of the Council said we have been warning the Government from about 2013-14 we could not cope with the level of cuts we are facing. Yeah. And three years ago, Mr Speaker, that council bragged it was pioneering an easy council model. It then pr proceeded to outsource 96 per cent of its council staff, transferred them to new service providers, run like private companies, paying dividends. Now that council has gone bust. Does the Prime Minister really believe that the slash-and-burn model for local government is really a good one? Can I say to the Right Honourable Gentleman, first of all, it would be helpful if he accurately re uh, reflected the independent statutory inspection which concluded last week, which was the report was clear that Northamptonshire's failure is not a case of underfunding. So his claims. Indeed, North, Northamptonshire's core spending power is set to rise by £14.5 million. Pounds. So I say to the Right Honourable Gentleman, the attack that he is making, that this is all about the amount of money that government is providing, is not correct. What we are ensuring, what we are ensuring, what we are ensuring is that councils are able to provide good services up and down the country, and that is what we see with councils, uh, Conservative councils up and down the country, costing people less, costing people less than Labour. Jeremy Corbyn. But the problem is that Northamptonshire has gone bust, and it's caused by the Conservative government and the Conservative council. And it's, and it's a model, Mr. Speaker, that is still being used by Barnet Borough Council, until very recently run by the Conservatives. They lost control of it this week, where, where Capita holds contracts with an estimated value of £500 million. What has Barnet done? Cut council staff every year and increase spending on consultants every year. Government cuts mean councils across England are facing a 5.8 billion funding gap by 2020. Yeah. So, with hindsight, does the Prime Minister really believe it was right to prioritise tax cuts for the super rich and big business? Yeah. Well, Mr. Speaker, clearly. Order, order, order. The House is becoming rather overexcited. I said a moment ago the Prime Minister's answer must be heard. The question from the Right Honourable Gentleman, the Leader of the Opposition, must also be heard. And it will be 
however long it takes. Mr. Snell, you are behaving in a most undignified manner. Compose yourself, man. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr. Speaker, there seems to be a lot of concern amongst Conservative members about uh, my suggestion that the government had prioritised tax cuts for the super rich and big business and put it as something more important than funding for social care, libraries, repairing potholes, bin collection or street cleaning. The right honourable gentleman, he talks about bin collection. Well, people living in Birmingham under a Labour run council saw thousands of tonnes of waste on the streets because the council was failing to collect the bins. And we all know he talks about payments, we all know he talks about tax. The top 1% of uh, taxpayers are paying the highest burden of tax than they ever paid under Labour. Labour would mean for council taxpayers because just this week the Shadow Communities Secretary backed, oh, oh, he says, oh. Could, could that be because he doesn't want people to know what he's supporting? Because he has supported a plan to stop local tax, taxpayers having the right to stop tax hikes. He's supporting a plan to introduce a land value tax, a tax on your home and your garden, and he wants to introduce a new hotel tax. We all know what would happen under Labour. More taxes and ordinary working people would pay the price. Mr Speaker. The Shadow Secretary for Local Government supports councils, thinks they should be properly funded, and doesn't think they should be a vehicle for privatisation. Mr Speaker, the leader of Surrey County Council, who is, happens to be a Conservative, said we are facing the most difficult financial crisis in our history. And he didn't mince his words. He went on to say the Government cannot stand idly by while Rome burns. Yeah. Council funding has been cut by half since 2010. Households in England, Mr Speaker, now face council tax rises of £1 billion. Yeah. The Tory leader of the Local Government Association says councils will have to continue to cut back services or stop yeah. some altogether due to government cuts. So as people open their council tax bills, isn't it clear what the Conservative message is? Pay more to get less. Uh, the average council tax for band E property is £100 less under Conservative councils than it is under Labour. But he says, he says that his shadow local government secretary is supporting councils. I wonder if he's supporting these councils, Haringey, where the Labour leader was forced out. Brighton, where the Labour leader was forced out. Cornwall, where the Labour group leader was forced out. What, what have these people done? They had supported building more homes, providing good local services and tackling anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. So the message, the message is clear. If you believe in good local services, if you want to see more homes built and if you want to tackle anti-Semitism, there is no place for you in the Labour Party. Mr Speaker, Labour councils build houses, Conservative councils privatise. Mr. Order, 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 order. There's a very raucous atmosphere. I've said it before, I say it again. Backbench members should seek to imitate the zen like calm of the Father of the House, who's an example to us all. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn. We all admire Zen, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> pay, pay more for less is what the Conservative message is. In Leicestershire, the County Council is pushing through £50 million worth of cuts yeah. and council increases, council tax increases of 6%. Their deputy leader blamed chronically low government funding. That's the Tory message. Pay more to get less. But it's not just households, Mr Speaker. 
the average small shop will see their rates bill increase by £3,600. Empty shops suck the whole life out of our high streets and local communities. So why is the Prime Minister presiding over a government that is tearing the heart out of our local high streets? We've, surprised, we've provided extra support for smaller businesses in relation to business rates. Secondly, he talks about Labour councils building homes. Well, actually, we've built, uh, seen more council homes being built under this government than under 13 years of a Labour government. And he talks about what councillors are saying at local level. Well, I'm pleased to say that yesterday, two Labour councillors from Ashfield District Council What did one of them say? They said, both locally and nationally, the Labour Party has been taken over by the hard left, who are more interested in fighting internal ideological battles than standing up for the priorities of working men and women. Conservatives will always welcome people who care about their local area, and we will always stand up for people in their local area. Mr Speaker, Half a million businesses will see their rates rise this year, some by 500 per cent. Even Mary Portis, who led the government's Save the High Street campaign, said it was simply a PR campaign which looked like, hey, we're doing something, and hoped it might kick-start something. But it didn't. Mr Speaker, this Conservative government has slashed public services. They cut funding and expect councils to pick up the pieces. The result of this is children's centres are closing, schools are struggling, fewer police on the streets, older people being left without care or dignity, and refugees turning women away. The Tories' own head of local government says it's unsustainable. And doesn't it tell you everything you need to know? Doesn't it tell you everything you need to know about this government that it demands households and businesses pay more to get less? This, uh, this government is spending more on our schools and our NHS than ever before. We're able to do that because of the balanced approach we take to our economy and because of the strong economy we see under the Conservatives. But I notice that the right honourable gentleman in his six questions has not mentioned today's unemployment figures. (laughs) Employment is at a joint record high. Unemployment hasn't been lower since 1975. Economic inactivity is at a record low. That's a strong jobs market. Who do I think benefits from a strong jobs market? Labour staffers, Labour council leaders and moderate Labour members of Parliament. Yeah. 